Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and Gentlemen, j'espère que je suis un menteur. I must apologize, I'm a liar. The title of my talk is not actually what you see behind me. Ceci, ce n'est pas un titre. So for this, I apologize. My title is not Xcodeless, it is in fact Xcodeless. Please forgive me. We'll start off, what do I mean by this? Why do I want us to Xcode less? I want us to uh, assess our tools, what they are, what we might consider as alternatives, and why we might consider something else. Uh, is it because we are forced out of necessity, we can't develop on a Mac? Perhaps you've ever worked in an enterprise environment that says you must use a PC. If you've ever had that conversation, leave the company. We're, let's assess our tools. What is Xcode to us? What do we use Xcode for? Uh, first and foremost, it's a text editor. Um, it's, it's a pretty good one. It's also a build system. Uh, it's a test runner if you write tests, which I hope everyone does. It's a debugger if you debug. Um, and it's a distribution tool whether you like it or not. Um, I'm going to focus on two things, specifically the text editor and the build tool because those are the two things that you're going to need to make a, a functioning application. Um, the rest, unless you want to ship to the App Store, the rest are nice additions. So like I said, why Xcodeless? Oh, sorry. Um, Xcode serves a lot of purposes. Um, it does a lot of things. Like I said, those five ones in, in particular. Um, but I realize like, the more proficient I get with Xcode, the, more, the, the less proficient I'm able to get with any other tools. And Xcode is not the only tool that I want to use in my day-to-day -day work. There are almost certainly other things that I want to achieve which doesn't involve writing an iPhone app for. There's a lot of things I want to be able to automate uh, on my computer, which unfortunately for now is not an iPhone still. Um, there's a, a lot of things that I want to be able to do and pass that knowledge on from one place to another. Uh, if you ever have um, LD cannot find library L pods. iOS apps aren't the only things that suffer from link problems. If you can link a library in a different set of tools, you can do the same here and you're not tied to a single way of how to do things. And also you're no longer just iOS developers, right? I'm sure everyone here probably says they're a backend developer on their LinkedIn CV now. Because um, it's totally legit. It just doesn't say how much experience or how good you are, but you can definitely do it. So text editing, uh, what is it? Other than editing text, well, I'd like to describe it like that. Um, so we take a string, and we get a string, and then we get an array of files. You'll notice as well I'm actually using the uh, Swift 3 currying syntax. Um, you could also consider it like this. You get files, but you also see it. You're reading what you're editing as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't necessarily know what you're typing. This one, actually, I did with the proposed Swift 4 syntax, uh, which looks a bit like that. You don't like it. Text editor, like I said, is doing two things. We're, we're reading code, we're understanding code, and then we're writing code. Um, Xcode is actually really great at this. Xcode is a brilliant um, text editor or code editor. Um, it has great syntax highlighting, color schemes, method definitions, the documentation, autocomplete, autoindent, all, all, all the nice things. Um, so unfortunately, when we move away from Xcode, a lot of what we're going to do is filling in these gaps. Now, who of relevance might not use Xcode in their day-to-day -day work? Um, they may be building a tool that maybe can't be compiled in Xcode. And how, how would they go about it? And we don't have to look that far to see. So if you uh, peruse this folder, you will see some auto-indent files, some syntax highlighting files. All of these will, uh, you can bang in with your vimrc, and you're good to go. You've got Swift syntax highlighting, indenting. Um, and this is for when you're ever in a situation where you can't edit files in Xcode. Um, if you ever have to SSH into a server that isn't a Mac, you're not going to have Xcode there. Um, and this is going to be a more and more common occurrence, one would think. Um, but the more interesting thing is the build and run tool. Um, this is the biggest thing that we use Xcode for. 
So it takes a string or an array of strings if you want to go by the different files. It takes an optional set of instructions. You may have no instructions. And it gives you a program at the end of it. If you stay solely with an Xcode, this is, this is your understanding of what that means. You press play, and it works sometimes. So what does it do? What, uh, what does it do? What does the play button do? Because um, normally I would expect it to start, start some kind of media. Xcode and, and the build system is made up of a lot of things that aren't Xcode. Xcode is built up of little blocks of not Xcode blocks. Um, one of those blocks uh, is the logging, which tells us how Xcode is using those blocks to build and be part of Xcode. Let's have a quick look. If we start a new CLI tool, uh, and we look in the logs, this is how Xcode builds that single file, uh, main.m, which prints hello world. It's a little hard to pass. Unfortunately, this is as well, but at least it's on fewer lines. So what this is, um, is me taking out in a make file some of the things that it's doing. Um, particularly, this will compile anything which has a folder, uh, the source directory you can put in, and any child files of that are so, uh, something.swift files. Um, so th this is basically the extent of, of the make file. So if we look at actually Xcode's build settings, um, you can see that with this. Um, so this was new CLI tool, um, print hello world in main.swift. There are 334 build settings for that uh, with Xcode build. Now, what's better? Well, how, how many do you think there would be here? I would assume zero, um, but there are 11. There are 11 Java settings for every new CLI tool that you create with an Xcode project. Just speaking for myself, but I've never used those. So if you've ever used the, the github.com slash den thing, it gives you some nice software programmer quotes. Any feature added dilutes everything else, um, which I tend to agree, and I'd like to amend that. Any feature added makes the product worse for anyone that does not make use of it. I've never made use of Java, and that's at least 11 build settings that I have to try and comprehend. Um, there's a whole lot more that I have to try and comprehend, but those are just the Java ones, which I'm absolutely sure I'm not going to need. Uh, that was me at .swift. So if we want to be really minimalist, like in terms of our instructions, like our optional parameter of instructions, this was, um, uh, our Xcode proj was 334, so this one is zero. So this is going to print hello world, um, and it's going to run as a Swift program. But let's make this a bit better. Now, we're very familiar with the whole build and run cycle, um, and it wastes a lot of time. I want us to, to, to make this better. So in the same way we look at how um, Xcode will build the CLI, we can look into how it builds frameworks, which are dynamically loaded. And one of the special secrets is it passes in this flag. So we can make our own dynamic libraries, which is to say we can make some libraries which we, as a matter of fact, run time. Um, and then uh, uh, we bundle them, because we can open uh, at runtime these files with um, uh, a DL open command, but it's even easier if we, want, if we ever want to package resources that we can update at runtime as well, we put that in a bundle. So a bundle is something that, uh, well, it can have a dynamic executable in, and it can have a bunch of resources, so that'll serve us just fine. Um, so what we can do is if we are able to compile maybe just the things that we've changed as opposed to uh, most of the whole project, even with um, some of the intermediate uh, build steps which, uh, or build files which they will keep around for an incremental build. If we compile a single file that we've changed, because uh, there's a single color somewhere deep in the stack view, uh, which we've been told is wrong after being explicitly told that it was the one we put in. Um, we're gonna have to reload the whole thing. So instead, if we just reload that part, and somehow send it over the wire, perhaps via TCP, which is uh, the first iteration of this, uh, we can uh, put in a bit of code that will accept that bundle and, and load it at runtime, so we can actually change what we've got going at runtime. Uh, this would 
definitely get rid of a lot of compilation cycles. So we can have a look at sending it over TCP. Now, I have actually um, a live demo which uses multi-peer connectivity, uh, which I'm pretty sure is going to fail. So I took a video uh, first, and then we'll have a look. Yes, OK. Wait. Um, I'm sorry it's not as exciting as all that, but to me it was. Um, because while I couldn't think of much else to demo at the time, um, that's that color that's way deep down in the stack view that you had to rebuild your whole app for. Um, so yeah, for this one, so I've, I've, been, I've been told by Silva that um, these, these videos get done up in post. Um, I don't know if any of you were at 2013 WWDC, but that was a really cool demo by Anki, and it totally failed. And then if you saw the video afterwards, it got cut out. So what I'm going to do is a failing demo, but this part's going to get cut out, right? Right? And you're all going to clap at the end, make sure. And then we're going to edit it in with a successful one. Is everyone on board? <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right, Silva, please. Round of applause for Sylvain. It failed already. So if you just hold it up nicely, right? Sylvain looking good? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. OK. So Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you all very much. Um, I was afraid that wouldn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what, what have I been trying to say with all this? Well, if we take a step back and focus on the the individual parts of what we have to do, of what Xcode does as a tool for us in our, um, in our day jobs, um, we can look at making some things better, um, albeit um, not necessarily, um, uh, not, not too rigorously. Some, sometimes uh, demos might fail. But um, this is you know, following a very old philosophy, do one thing and do it well. So if we make a really, really, really good text editor, uh, which, in all fairness, Xcode is great at. We don't need to worry about uh, whether or not a, um, a, a syntax checker might fail or whether or not a source kit might crash, because that's totally different. And in fact, this is the whole reason why source, source kit was outsourced as a different process, so that that unstable part couldn't affect the integrity of the text editor. Um, what I... Uh, showed in the successful demo as well just now was um, basically offloading a bunch of the computation. So uh, there was a separation between the compilation and, um, and the sending to the device. Now that comp compilation can actually be done anywhere. So if you have a, uh, a Mac Pro lying around which you use as your CI server, you can also use it as, as a generic purpose uh, compilation unit and you can uh, walk around with your 12-inch MacBook. Um, this is what I like to do normally. Uh, so basically, this is just time sharing. Um, this is a very old com uh, computing concept. Um, now, a lot of these uh, features, you can add in with Xcode plugins and things like this. And what I would, what I would say there is this is somehow the difference between um, basically composition and inheritance, uh, in that if you can compose uh, your brilliant text editor, your brilliant compiler. You can then put in um, between the compiler and the device another thing that will send that over the wire. You could send it to another device over the world. Um, whereas with uh, the plugin, uh, the plugin root with inheritance, 
um, you have to add to everything that is already there. Um, and often that's going to be harder. So if you have to understand what those 334 uh, build rules need to, need to accomplish, it's going to be much harder to slot in with that. Um, all of these programming concepts are actually from the previous century. Um, but by focusing on different parts of what we do, like professionally or otherwise, uh, we can make them better individually to improve the whole, right? So if I'm a 1x developer, I really want to be a 1.2x developer. Thank you very much. <laughs>